Eric, I wasn't done. Okay, go you ahead. Shut up. <laughs> All right, continue. go ahead. Now go ahead. Entity versus Aster. This is going to be an epic matchup. Winner of this, I believe, secures themselves top four. That's right, Suns fan. All right, let's get back. In the game. That's all I had to say about that. Yeah, this is going to be a great cast. Really enjoy having you here as yeah, always. Usually, there's a third guy to carry us. Yeah, true. Well, unfortunately. All right, so we've seen the Underlord come out uh, in the past, and it has been extremely good. This was a last pick, in fact. So, what are your thoughts on this hero in this game? Well, it's one of Saberlight's best heroes. Uh, he played this a lot uh, on the offlane position. I think that the Underlord ult, as we have a oh. smoke break here. Yes, and Siamese Cat not very afraid. He just goes straight up to the high ground. Fishman already going to get hit by this Blood Ride, but XXS, he's the one that's taking heavy damage because Saberlight is here with that Firestorm percentage based damage. You can see Siamese Cat trying to slow them down a bit. Doesn't look like a kill will come from this, but most of the damage done to the side of Aster. Yeah, Entity are kind of. Kind of horrible at fighting this level one. Anytime you have Enigma, it's, uh, it always feels kind of bad. And that's why they're positioning as five on the high ground like this. It's because, well, this is kind of the only way they'll win a level one fight. So back to the Underlord. You were making a very important point that I was definitely listening to. I think the Fiend's Gate is one of the least utilized abilities in Dota. Yep, this I is agree. a very underrated ability. I've seen Refresher and then Backdooring in like three seconds. Wow, they're really wanting this bounty run. Aster will take it. And it looks like Fishman is going to take the most damage out of this engagement, but he will live as Baboka blocked off by that Fissure. Uh, I agree. Fiend's, Fiend's Gate is a very cool ability. We don't see it as utilized as much. I mean, it's only been out for... It's very new. Yeah, it's very new. Relatively new overall. Yeah. There's going to be some abuse that comes with this, I think, in, in some competitive game. Hopefully this one that gets it nerfed. Yes. Well, I don't want to get it nerfed. That sounds... No, I want it to be want cool. It to, be good first. to be cool enough that it has to be nerfed. Oh, That's I what see. I mean. Okay. Are you surprised to see a Chen not banned? This hero, I haven't looked at the. I mean, when we saw the stats, it was an 80% win rate with a lot of games, and then it feels like every game since then has been a win. So I would assume it's only increased in that number. Yeah. No, I, I think when Aster is first pick, I expect it not to be banned uh, by Aster. And for Entity, I guess it's Fishman. It's one of Fishman's three guys that he plays. He's got the Clock, he's got the Bane, he's got the Chen. Uh, actually, it's like a 60% win rate with Bane over like almost a thousand matches in pubs. It's insane. Saber Light in the off lane as this. We can call him the position one Underlord, I guess. That was nice. Did you see that? He drew aggro, so that way the range creep, he could get the go for the deny on it. It was kind of nice. Didn't get okay. it. Though. Getting pressured out. And. I really, again, Underlord, when I see this hero, I, I need to talk about it nonstop until everybody's just sick and tired of it. But what's, what exactly is the build on this hero? I, th I think the Treads, Atos, BKB thing is still the build people are doing. Uh, the Atos, of course, let he, lets you chain into the pit so you can get two pit stuns, uh, which, of course, on Storm and, and against Bloodseeker, a very fast hero, it's going to be very effective. And, like, the Treads, BKB... People realize that this hero is actually like a right clicker. He does a lot of damage and he can carry the game uh, as long as you build items that enable that. So I, I, I really do like the Treads BKB. I've not really seen anybody do anything else, uh, even though that did get nerfed a little bit. Now, bot lane, Toby, position three Enigma. Uh, coupled up with Fishman, which you were looking at the stats of him before this game, and he's picked Bane a lot. Yeah, this man is a uh, fiend. I mean, he obviously has a big. I wouldn't say a big hero pool in this tournament, but he's picked other heroes for sure. But his bane is uh, pretty damn epic. The fact that it's a uh, level, is that a level 30 Dota Plus? 25. If, if, I think he would have an even bigger hero pool if Kataomi wasn't always on Wyvern. But this guy has looked like the single best Wyvern in the entire tournament, oh, yeah. which is saying a lot because everybody's picking Wyvern. This is one of the most OP heroes in the game right now. Yep, and it gets through again as Ori doing some damage to Storm Stormer mid. He's had a great tournament. I guess you can say that for both heroes or both players, but. In terms of the CS 15 and 5 versus the 14 and 1 on Ori, kind of what you expect uh, from these mid laners? Yeah, I mean, I, I would say so. I, Storm, there's very few lanes that he loses. He just shoves out the lane. You kind of have to kill him. Uh, Tiny, he's got, of course, the, the tree grab, which is going to give him, like, for those five hits, you're going to get a last hit or deny, or at least, like, value her ass. So it's going to come down to runes in this game. Uh, both sides have supports that are okay at running at the runes because they're like fast move speed and both mids. If one of these mids gets like a haste or a DD rune or an arcane rune for Storm, it, it, it could mean a very easy early game. 
Have yet to see too much action yet, just mostly both respective teams happy with the farm distribution at the moment. And Saberlight again going against Monet in this top lane, but the fact that this last pick, Underlord, came out, and again, the question has come again and again when we see this Chen picked up, especially when it's really early. How will you deal with it? They have an Enigma, they have Wyvern, they have Under... It feels like they have a lot of options to try to counteract what Baboka is going to try to do this game. Yeah, I think Fishman uh, has a pretty good idea of how to counter one of his three guys. True. Uh, the Entity has been the team that has looked the best with the Chen, uh, which is why it makes it all the more surprising that they let it through. As he does get the Mana Burn Creep, also giving Mana to... Oh, that's a nice counter. All right. I mean, that's the other thing from Fishman's perspective. If they're able to beat Chen and also win with Chen, that's a huge draft advantage because not having to use a ban on it just gives you an extra one to work with. Yeah, and it's it's a first phase hero too, so it's like you only have two two bans to deal with it, uh, and a support, so it, it actually feels kind of bad to ban it, but people still have to. I, I, I've seen this Enigma versus Dawnbreaker lane, and I do actually think the Malefus, it, it feels really good against, against the Dawn. Mm -hmm. uh, just any like low cooldown, low cost ability to, to interrupt her uh, Starbreaker feels extremely good. But of course, she does have ways of killing the Eidolon, so it goes both ways. As this bot lane continues as Fishman body blocking his own camp. Yep. I mean, there's a ward there anyway, I guess, says Baboka. He's getting another creep to work with for the time being. Are you surprised with the fact that we haven't seen a kill yet? I mean, you talked about the Malefus against the Starbreaker, a really good way to, to cancel that. Obviously, mid lane, it's going to be mostly farm until, I would assume, Storm hits level 6 or some sort of a gank attempt comes. But, I mean, Baboka hasn't really moved from this lane yet. Ori I think, having to do the walk of shame right now. Now is when we're going to see a kill. Uh, Ori does the thing where you get the boots of speed, you walk back to base with your level 6, and you usually, after this point, TP somewhere to go for a kill. Yep, Hammer comes out onto Fishman, but they're not going to follow up with a Starbreaker, knowing that the Enigma yeah, he's is going top. somewhat close. Yep. Yep, top lane, Ori TP's in, Fissure to set things up, the fire something a little bit of damage to Monet, but this looks like Kataomi will fall with one more zip, but he pops that very fire, another right click, but he saves himself, so Ori has to fully commit to this, but the blood right is there, and Monet and company will get first blood on the side of Aster. So it's first blood, he gets, you know, 350 gold for that, that's definitely, if that wasn't first blood, that wouldn't be worth it. Maybe Stormstormer will make it not worth it, actually, yeah. with this rotation. That is a, that is a haste route. They see him, though. That is a quick tiny. Vision they they saw him on the board. He could potentially dive, but Monet finds the cover of the trees, so haste rune, unfortunately for Entity, not able to be taken full advantage of. Yeah, that's, that's a nice ward. Like, both teams know that the side lanes alone are not really going to get any kills because it's Enigma and Underlord on the Entity side. Like, these heroes are not going to get kills, and they're very difficult to kill, so everything is dependent on these mid laners. And we could see that... With the TP rotation, Ori's able to get a kill. I feel like that's probably the same thing Stormstorm is going to have to do. It'll need to be a smoke or a TP because Aster is, is well aware of what needs to happen for the side lanes to die. And now Ori, filling his bottle again. And this game, I mean, you, you talked about how Storm Spirit is kind of picked, even in first phase, considering how the heroes kind of dropped off a lot, but probably against this Wyvern is the main reason. Do you expect like an Orchid or something like that to come, or is that going to be overkill? I, I think so, honestly. I think that's the reason that you're picking it is as, as like that assassin type hero. Uh, but I want to call Storm Spear bad because it, the mana cost is so high in all of his abilities now without null talismans. Like there's nothing to rectify that, but you need something to jump Wyvern, especially Katomi on Wyvern, like Baboka. Yep, he's going to get Malefice with some creeps beating him down as well. And Baboka looks to be dead. His creep's not able to save him this time. Stormstormer oh, right click. He's going to go down. Fishman gets credit for that. And Stormstormer with a huge kill onto Ori. That's a solo kill. Yeah, Ori, Ori just walked up and gripped him in the tower thinking that Stormstormer would back off. But he combos him and it's just a free kill. Wow, that is huge. I mean, before that, the farm discrepancy pretty much non-existent. It was very even, but... That'll certainly help Stormstormer out as you know, see another avalanche catching Siamese Cat. It gets a nice enchant totem, but he's going to get tossed in the air. And as we've seen before, Earthshaker in this early stage can be a bit pathetic at times. Top line, we're going to see a zip in from Ori. And here comes the Dawnbreaker ult, the Saberlight, going to get stunned and brought down despite the cold embrace coming out. A I mean, nice that's... kill for Aster. 
it, it's a three core rotation though for Aster. Like, I, I'm not even sure if that's worth it. Saberlight is just going to TP back up and keep farming. There's no tower that they get. Now there's three cores stuck in one area farming. Toby is bot, completely free farming. There's not even anybody in lane against him. Stormstormer, by the way, he's opting to max his tree grab on the mid lane, so... Uh, he d does go for a second point in toss now, but opting to farm a little bit more, which I think makes sense, because... These two side laners are off laners, and so he's playing more like a carry tiny from mid. Yeah, and that's something I also want to talk about, is the fact that Entity has kind of created this meta to a degree, where they're just picking a bunch of <laughs> off lane heroes every game. Part of it's necessity because of the sub, but at the same time, they did a lot of this with Pure as well at times, so... Why do you think this is so effective all of a sudden? I think the fact that the 4 and 5 position have also became kind of the same ro uh, role. Like, there, there really isn't a 5 or a 4 anymore. I think that definitely helps. Uh, there's a lot of farm on the map too. People are really good at consuming a lot of farm. Like, there's a lot of wave cutting and stuff that's happening, right? You see these offlaners dual melee often. Uh, where the four will just cut the wave. So I think people have just gotten better and figured out how to farm the map. And then also there is more farm on the map. There's like these guaranteed bounty runes that are coming out and uh, and things like that. So yeah, I think I think Dota is just uh, evolving and, and I don't know, maybe maybe they change it back. But I kind of like this one. This, I, is, this is a fun patch. I, I agree, actually. I mean, you know me, the big fatty strength heroes yeah. being picked in mass sounds good to me. Those are the good ones. Ten yeah. minute rune coming up. Stormstormer and Ori looking for it. It's going to be bottled by Stormstormer. It's an arcane rune and into a black hole with an Avatos. Great timing here from Entity baiting Ori out. And that is the second death for the Storm Spirit. Yeah, and they do this with the catapult wave coming out. So I think they're going to stick around here and push. At the very least, they're probably going to force Aster to rotate some heroes to deal with this and cost them some resources. Yep, Fissure comes out, but. And the fortification as well. And obviously, the push is here from Entity with this siege. We'll see how much they want to commit to try to keep this alive, but looks like it'll just end here as Ori TPing in. And yeah, they're going to zip well. right away. Avalanche comes out. Dawnbreaker all coming. Stormstormer is going to get. Whoop! Nice nightmare dodge on that, but I'm not sure it's going to help him. No black hole to help with. So Stormstormer looks to be mega dead. And again, a nice potential save there, but it's not going to happen. As Saberlight actually used his Fiend's Gate. I'm just going to get the hell out back to top lane. Well, that's the he, good thing about that ult, is you can just like, change your mind, you know? He came in, and Monet <laughs> ruptured him, and then he's like, oh, shit, I'm ruptured, I have to go back. Oh, it's a good thing he doesn't take damage from teleporting across the map. That would have one-shot uh, him, that's yep, right. Indeed. Uh, but yeah, rupture kind of wasted, I guess. I'm not sure if he even wanted to fight, considering that he was horribly outnumbered there. Oh, man, Fishman's actually level 6 already, so he's yeah. looking for a play here. No keen optic. He is spotted, though, by this ward, so... If he breaks, he's spotted. Oh, Mane, his positioning is too good. Yeah, I had an idea that might be happening as Saberlight. Working on the Atos, like you said, to get that triple root, if you want to call it that. And has the treads as well. What, what do you go after the Atos? You go for something mega tanky? BKB. It's, it's, it's definitely BKB. You just walk in, uh, hopefully like a hero dies. You know, you, you Atos a hero in the pit, and you get a bunch of right clicks on them for like 350 damage. Uh, it's it's really good. This is the thing that Amara was doing at uh, the last major that he kind of popularized. Oh, all right. Stormstormer able to make sure he gets that regen rune. Fishman, he's going to get the grip off, actually, but the Fissure cancels it. And Saberlight not able to get the Pit of Malice. Finally does, but he's already on the high ground. Malefice is there. Ori completely out of mana, and the kill goes to Stormstormer again. He's got his blink coming, and they're going to get a Tier 1 tower as well. So Entity, and Stormstormer especially, really taking off here. But the one hero we haven't talked about at all is XXS. The offlane Dawnbreaker is top in net worth. He is farming out of control right now, getting close to that Echo Saber. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess Entity, they've just been kind of uh, running around and, and making the move. So XXS, obviously being a hero that just re responds to this globally without having to leave a lane. He's been able to farm, but they are going to make a move on him here. Yeah, that's a really long TP, and the tower's going to go down. Fishman has no grip, but he has some... Is there any smoke coming into this? Well, he's going to show himself now. There's the Nightmare. And some right armor. clicks off, as you can see. Baboka on the other side of the trees, and Fishman kind of changing his mind. He's going to get Hurricane, though, into the hammer. Starbreaker not even needed, though. He's actually going to fall back as a Fiendsgate is shown. And that means Saber Chat is here to save the day. 
Gravitas finishes off Boboka, and XXS looks to be potentially next on the list, but Kataomi not able to find the curse in time. And Saberlight, well, back where he came from. Back to the top. Okay, I mean, it's a support kill. Uh, I don't think it's... Uh, what, what's important about that for Entity is that that does push Aster out of their jungle, which means that they can go eat up this entire jungle. Saberlight can continue farming top. He's farming up that triangle. And Toby, he's mid. He actually does have the Blink Dagger, by the way, on Enigma. So we're going to see some nice big black holes coming from him. Went for the Blink before finishing the Vessel, which is uh, not usually the build that we see. Hmm. So we're seeing two scans come out simultaneously in the same area, actually, as Ori. Makes that illusion room for himself. I feel like he has been <laughs> denied so many runes so far this game. Yeah. <laughs> Might be his first, honestly, outside the, the water runes. It's actually a nice illusion room for him to disjoint all of the Bane spells and yep. oh, he get out of the pit. Oh. So I won't have that option now. And I mean, for him, what, what is the... He talked about potentially going for the Orchid, but it looks like he's going to be going the SNK instead. Uh, but after the fact, I mean, is that status resistance enough to deal with the Pit of Malice? Yeah, I mean, according to Quinn, it doesn't... Or was it Owie? According to Owie, it doesn't work on the Tiny Avalanche. So yeah. <laughs> I actually feel that like that's kind of rough this game. Uh, it is good against the Pit. Oh, Manet walks right into a smoke. But they have no vision. Yeah, so things break up there. But they're going to get the deny right after the fact. So I would assume a BKB like right after then. Probably, Ori. yeah. Uh, it's, I mean, it is a hard game to just go in because uh, he can get black holed, he can get gripped, uh, which I think that's probably a, a part of the reason that he went for this. He's going for this SNK because, you know, something to reduce the bane spells on you. Yeah. Oh, Saberlight is getting initiated. You can see the Wyvern TPing in. Has the curse available? Saberlight gets Hurricane onto the other side. The Avatars on top of the curse, though, so no damage really done. And Saberlight is likely going to die here. Another zip in from Ori, but he's out of mana. Toby gets the black hole, but a nice dodge from Ori. There's only one inside, and it's XXS. Toby, cold embrace, not going to save him. But Saberlight able to get out. A nice echo step coming out from Siamese Cat. They find three, so only Saberlight will live out of this engagement and into the Fiend's game. Monet well, could follow him up, but either way for Aster, they're happy with the four kill exchange. Good jump by Aster. I mean, that was kind of disastrous spell pressing from Entity. I think they, they overlapped the, the black hole and the fiend's grip and the curse yeah. at some point during that fight. And Ori, I feel like he baited this black hole out and then they just zipped right out. And that the pit. Sick. And the pit also. He forces the pit to the top right. Yeah, that's the, the combo there that really hurt them. And then also not knowing where the Dawnbreaker ult is coming Baiting. in definitely Ooh. helps. That was nice. Zips to the high ground. That yeah. was super nice. Monet also was keeping his distance there, uh, not, not willing to get hold with his other heroes. And the finishing move with the Echo Slam comes out from Aster. So, I mean, you can see Entity, they have this team fight capability. Uh, obviously, if they had uh, used them properly, it would have gone a lot better. But it scales so well into the late game that it's something you have to always keep in mind if you're Aster. I mean, they have a 5k lead, which is relatively comfortable. But at the same time, like going against this Black Hole, the Wyvern Curse, all that stuff, very, very scary. Saberlight, not looking so scary right now as he's dropped to the deck. <laughs> so Aster, it's only an 8-6 lead for them, but net worth-wise, not very close at the moment. Yeah, a, a bit disrespectful from Saberlight, pushing out the mid lane and, and showing himself with his body there. He could just walk in and Firestorm. Uh, I suppose he doesn't realize Ori has this uh, arcane rune, which lets him do that big zip. But, of course, Storm Spirit, one of the best heroes at killing heroes that are just standing on lanes. So, especially with how well Ori is doing in this game, like, Entity's got to be really careful showing on lanes. Uh, otherwise, the Storm is going to come in, and if, and if it looks good enough, then XSS also comes in. And he is right now. Yeah, they get the initiation on to Fishman with XXS and that Solar Guardian. Easy pickup for Aster again, as the SNK now officially finished for Ori. And things definitely looking in control of Aster right now. And you know what my next question is going to be, Jenkins? Uh, that would be Roche. Yes. How are the Roche lineups this time? Aster, it's not the most traditional. But well, both if sides. If you have this much of a, a lead, maybe it's going to be a little bit easier. Yeah, both sides have big team fight. Uh, by the way, uh, Earthshaker, Siamese Cat, he opted to pick up the Shard first. Okay. So he wants to play these kind of pokey fights where you're just, you know, standing far away and... and 
casting spells over and over again, trying to get multiple rounds of spells off. And I feel like that makes sense. You're playing into Black Hole, you're playing into Winter's Curse, you're playing into Fiend's Grip. Even Fiend's Gate is somewhat of a, I mean, it's a long cooldown ability that's, that's pretty important. So Aster doesn't want to bank on like winning a fair fight and a team fight. They want to play these long engagements. Yep, as Ori looking for the BKB now. And I know this is not something we're going to see, but it's probably the last time I'll be able to mention it. What do you think of Underlord Aghanim Scepter? It's a global pit of malice, which against Ori, before he gets that BKB, could be a pretty sick setup. People, I know he's not going for people, it. People were going for that at the start of the patch uh, when, when the Fiend's Gate first came out. Uh, but the, the problem with it is like everybody builds BKB so quickly. Yeah. They did on that patch, and they still do that it feels like by the time you get it, you, the BKB just nullifies it anyway, right? So I, I don't think we'll see it coming out here, uh, like, at, at all. I, I think if Saber it goes extreme late game. Though. Well, if he gets it off of Roshan, I feel like Saber Light's going to opt to build, like, Abyssal Blade and, and sort of carry items. Because uh, scaling, like, boy, I, I don't know if you want to go late game against Bloodseeker, Storm, Dawn without building scaling items. That sounds like a good way to lose. Right. Yeah, they're going to need some follow-up with all this team fight. They just need to layer it properly. We have really not seen a, a curse come out that has been effective as of yet. And the black hole, obviously, we saw earlier. Uh, I did get a kill on the first go-around. I mean, a lot of games, we don't see black hole cast until like 40 minutes. We've already seen two, which That's is true. actually outside the norm. Yeah. Toby's being very active. Uh, Kataomi, by the way, almost has the blink dagger. Another 350 gold, and he'll have it. Uh, so that's going to be very important. Does not have the Wraith Band this time, which is the build uh, that we've been seeing him do. I'm sure he'll get it right after. Eh, he probably will. I mean, it, at 25 minutes, it gets stronger, so I, I think we'll probably unironically see it. Uh, it's just that in this game, he's like, okay, I need the Blink Dagger for these fights, and I need it fast. Yeah, and Aster. They have one BKB on Monet already, so we'll see if they just wait for Ori to get enough for his own. It's, it's continue to expand this lead. It's pretty far. It's pretty far away, and Ori does have a DD. But uh, once again, like it's it's this thing where like, you know, y you don't want to fight into Entity because they have this crazy team fight, and I don't know if they have to fight into Entity because Aster's late game is significantly better other than the Enigma, mm -hmm. uh, and so it's really all about Toby if this game does go late and hitting those big black holes. But it, it's tough. It's tough against against Storm and and Dawnbreaker. Yeah, and I mean Toby's gonna need a BKB for himself just to counteract anything that. Uh that Siamese cat has to work with at that long-range fissure. Yeah, otherwise, like, the Dawn ult, too, just comes in and it's going to cancel, even if the Siamese cat is not there to fissure. Yeah. Definitely a pseudo-counter. And ever since the Stormstormer Blink has come online, they've actually kind of dropped off a bit, which is usually not the case for Tiny Snowballing potential, because Stormstormer got off to an amazing start. They're going to smoke up, find Monet, Avatos to start things out. Already at half health, he's going to pop his BKB, though, and there's the grip of the Dawnbreaker ult and the Fissure canceling that immediately. Big Starbreaker coming out as XXS deletes two heroes from Entity. Kataomi. To try to cold embrace himself as Ori just focusing on Saberlight, who's going inside his ult, but it's canceled. Triple kill for XXS, and Aster find four. Ori, Ori's going through. Does he know where that leads? <laughs> I, I don't know if you want to go in that. To the fountain they go. <laughs> that would have been good. That would have been great. He, <laughs> and, and on the old patch, he could have refilled his bottle. <laughs> Is that true? Yeah, he could have. But uh, that, that was really nice. Uh, XXS. The storm zip was coming through to the back lines, and XXS used the Dawnbreaker ult while he was zipping to hit the front lines. So, yeah, this this looked really nice. They're going on like three heroes at once because of this. So XXS is able to jump in and interrupt these two. Ooh. Yeah, that shard showing its full potential there for XXS. Without it, he would have gotten one kill. That one literally just decapitated two heroes. I think Ori was like channeling to also go in the the ult, so he's like, if you go in, I'm going to go in and kill you there. And Aster have really blown this wide open with now a 12k lead, so now the question is, again, when is Roche? Because we've seen a lot of Roches sub-20 minutes. This one's a little later uh, for the first one, but obviously not traditional Roche-taking teams. But like you said as well earlier, that there is a lot of team fight they have to worry about, so getting those pickoffs and then being able to kill Roche after might be the play. I think that is the play. I can understand why Aster is afraid to walk into the Roche pit, despite having this insane gold lead that oh. they obviously feel in the game. The scan came out, and Entity might be thinking that they're inside Roche. 
as it did turn red temporarily. You have an idea that they're in, at least in that area. They, they desperately want to pick off with this ward. They want somebody on Entity to walk in, but nah, they're, they're not going to give it to them. Stormstormer does have the Shadow Blade now. So he's, he's walking around looking for a pick off. But and nothing he, will come from this. Yeah, straight to the jungle he goes. Some nice vision there. Oh, that is a nice one. Yeah, that is. That one's going to be pretty hard to de ward, I that, like. Yeah, that's not getting de warded. I feel like that's super good, too, because the heroes that Entity have, Enigma, Wyvern, like these are heroes that want to just stand in trees in the back lines, right? So a ward like that is definitely going to catch somebody eventually. And almost a blink dagger. We just talked about uh, Siamese Cat just building a. The shard, but I feel like that was only a couple minutes ago. He already almost has that blink. So this is kind of the dream scenario for Earthshakers. Or he's got an arcane rune to work with on the next fight as well. And if he picks up this bounty rune, he'll be very close to the BKB. So very solid timing for Aster soon. Yeah, and I mean, there, there are still ways for Entity to kill the storm. We talked about the team fight, but it's going to have to be better execution than we've seen this game. I think this, uh, maybe it's just Aster playing really well, but the execution has been slightly off for Entity, where I feel like throughout the group stage and the playoffs thus far, they've looked pretty much on the same page, but not in game number one so, uh, in, in this case. Yeah, I mean, now on Saber Light. Entity's just kind of getting out team fought, uh, and I mean that like mechanically. Like their heroes are better at team fighting, but Aster is is outplaying them in the fights, making it very difficult for them to take the sort of engagement that they want. Uh, Aster is not getting baited out of position where like three heroes are walking in and getting cursed or black holed. The one time that they did, there was kind of the the overlapping of spells, and it, that didn't even it, that honestly probably didn't even matter. Are they going to go commit to Roche? Do they feel like they have enough of a gold lead? Yeah, they are. Yeah, and we can see that Entity could theoretically get here in time, but I'm not sure if they're aware that this is happening. So already at half HP with the Basher now online for Monet. And the Penitence to help things out as well, speed this up. And it looks like Entity might just be giving this first Roche to Aster. And again, it is just the first Roche, so not the end of the world. Dude. So when that second rush goes down, where you really see the snowball. Look how far back XXS is playing. He's so far back. He knows that this is the only move that Entity could make is to him while this rush is happening. So he's literally sitting in the tier one. He's even by the tier two. Uh, Ori with the arcane rune is going to zip pretty fair distance as it looks like Siamese Cat actually gets picked off first. So this puts the first fight with the Aegis. We're kind of at a hold here for Aster as they're now in a 4v5 situation. That's the 5 Earth Shaker. He'll be up in 30 seconds. <laughs> That's the benefit, the silver lining. Yeah, it's not. It's really not that big of a deal. He didn't even show his Blink Dagger, by the way. It's uh, It was on the Courier at oh, the time. okay. So he will have that when he respawns. Uh, I imagine a smoke up will probably happen for, for Aster at that point. Kataomi now has the Shadow Amulet. We've seen the Shadow Blade from him before as well on this Wyvern. Dude, that was a long TP from Ori. That was a bit dangerous. I guess. But Entity kind of playing a bit scared, considering that Aster has shut everything down thus oh. far. But a couple TPs coming in to that top lane, Saber Light. He had a BKB. He's going to Fiend's Gate away. That was kind of nice from Monet. Just throws out the rupture, knowing that like Saber Light's afraid that Ori's going to do this long zip and go on him. So he has to waste the BKB. Now, now I feel like Aster can take almost any fight, and it's a good one. Yeah. Kataomi, though, with, the, with this ward, like it looks like Entity wants to fight anyway. Yep, they're going to try for it. XXS, he's going to be spotted by Kataomi right now. Not a great hero to go on. He's so tanky. Malice will not connect, but it'll block off this pathway for the time being. As Monet just targeting this tier 2 tower in the top lane. And it looks like he's actually focusing on a blink dagger, so wanting to get ultra aggressive. It's got to be given up knowing that this BKB is still on cooldown for Saberlight. Kata Omi, by the way, built a, a shadow or a, a shadow amulet. So uh, opting to not complete a glimmer cape or a shadow blade, uh, just playing to like be literally invisible, so that way the backline jump is not as much of a threat to him. I, I've seen quite a few like Dazzle's oracles do this in kind of desperation scenarios. Uh, it, it forces Ori to have like detection. Yeah, that could be hard to come by. It's Fishman. He's going to get a Nightmare off, but 
It's likely gonna fall, but a nice ult comes out from Kato Omi to try to save some space here for Fishman to get out. Toby comes in with the black hole, the grip on top of Ori as well. The hand of God will be enough. He's gonna pop his BKB and zip back onto Fishman. So a good attempt from Entity, but it's gonna be a one for one trade to start this out, and Saberlight will fall. So it was it seemed like good execution from Entity this time. It just wasn't enough to kill off those three heroes in the black hole. There's just not enough damage in the black hole. These heroes, the cha like the channel, he's got Holy Lock and he's got Mechanism. He used the Hand of God. It's it's too much. Like Aster's net worth, it's too high. The entity just legit does not have the damage to kill these heroes. I don't know if they could have executed better than this. Like this was a nice bait. Kataomi even baits himself using the Cold Embrace here. So look at look at XXS get baited to jump in. Yeah. How, how, what what more damage could, could they have? Stormstormer gets his combo off right at the end, too. I mean, that's Midnight Pulse with Fire. So that's a lot of percent It's a lot of percent damage. damage. And Stormstormer, like, finishes the combo, too, with, with his Avalanche Toss. So I, I don't... I don't see how Entity fights if that if they can't do it in, the, in that scenario. Like, they need Aghanim Scepter on Tiny or, or some item to give them damage. And what, what are they going for? Uh, he went for the Shard, so he's, he's going to go for a Moon Shard next. I imagine after that fight, he'll probably opt for the Moon Shard instead of the BKB, but we'll see. BKB's less risky, but I think they need to take a risk right now. Maybe yeah, even a Daedalus. Like they've been falling behind for quite a while as Fishman's Courier's taken out, but I mean, even with these fights that seem okay for Entity, they're, they're still falling behind in net worth as time goes on. Saberlight, unfortunately for him, not really able to have a huge impact in this game. Uh, in terms of the cores for his team, he's the bottom uh, from the farm perspective. He's going to go for a nullifier, obviously quite far away from that. Huh. What is that to counter? Are there any Yules or Ghost Scepters? Doesn't look like it. Stupendous. Does that work on Hand of God? Is that... No. Oh, maybe the regen, I guess. I don't know. Can you purge? I, I don't know if you can purge the Hand of God, actually. It's such a new ability that it, uh, it puts the region on you. It might be dispellable. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll see if he finishes that. We'll see. Smoke up now from Aster with his 15k lead. The Aegis is expiring in just a moment. Fishman is dead. Monet will clean him up. And now the Aegis is expired. And you can see Monet working on a Lincoln Sphere. And I believe that Lincoln Sphere is being built on the storm as well, potentially. Go through the Fiend's Gate. I dare you. Get in there. I mean, that would make for great content. But again, this is the lower bracket quarterfinals uh, of the Arlington the major, major. So that's right. Maybe not the best time to try that out. Uh, Ori was thinking about it earlier. Yeah. You know, you can't take the Dota player out of a <laughs> Dota player. <laughs> yeah, that's that's pretty accurate they've, assessment. They've said that before. That's a saying. An AC now online for XXS. And, I mean, he has the Mage Slayer. And looks like Aghanim Scepter is actually going to be the next choice for Baboka. So that hard to spell obviously won't do much against uh, the Curse. Or the Black Hole, obviously. But against Grip, very, very good. Did he? Why Smoke did he, on both sides. He just used Hand of God. Why, was that a misclick? Oh. I didn't even notice. Yeah. Was he using right. that on creeps? Was it creeps? Potentially. Monet. His smoke's going to be broken with Saber Light there as well. The curse comes out onto two. Not that much damage done, but it sets up a nice potential black hole here from Toby. But where is the damage output afterwards? The PKBs are just popped now. Echo Slam coming out. Fishman's going to get saved for the time being. But again, Entity just crumbling in this fight. Storm Summer does find one in the form of Siamese Cat, but it's going to cost him his own life. And only two members of Entity survive. And another team fight win by Aster as they can now poke the high ground and likely get a set of racks considering the, the state of Entity. No buyback on Stormstormer. That may have actually been a better fight for Entity. Ooh, Saber Light. Light full Starbreaker connects, Blood Right. He dodged here. And again, the Firestorm does a lot of damage. XXS trying to get his ult off just to reposition himself. He'll be successful. But the counter zip in from Ori, the bash from Monet. Golden Brace saving Saber Life for the time being, but he's going to continue to get right clicked by Monet. XXS not able to hit that Starbreaker, oh, but Ori, he gets the kill. Grip ends up getting canceled. So Aster not losing anybody after Siamese Cat dropped earlier in the fight. And they are going to get. Only the tier three tower mid.
Yeah, I can I can understand why they back off there. E even though there are no cooldowns up for Entity, it's like those were that was two jumps that could have gone really bad for them. Uh, they they could have lost like either core there, like Ori getting gripped. If if that grip had continued, it could have been a bit of a throw. I mean, of course they're gonna need to do that like three times in order to lose this game. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know you can you can back off and and just uh, you know strangulate Entity anyway and, and control the entire map, so why not do that? I don't even think they need to wait on, on the next Roshan, although it is up pretty soon. Yeah, no point in not waiting at this point. Let's see what timer it's going to be. Ooh, long. really late That's one. a long so, one. 250. Second Lincoln's online now for Ori. Storm Storm Stormer. Huh? He's going to be found already at half HP. He can't do anything. He just gets dropped from 100 to 0 at the tip of a Gaben's hat. Very quick, in other words, Jenkins. In case yeah, you're that's, I didn't. I had no idea what. Gaben tips his hat very quickly. Oh, he would. He has fast reaction time, but right. like you said, the Roche is going to be quite delayed, and I think Aster will be waiting for it, considering the stakes of this series. Uh, but now with that second Lincoln's online, that's going to be pretty damn hard to get a grip or a curse off on either Bloodseeker or Storm. Which I feel like the. Outside the black hole, the curse very important to try to at least do some damage to set up these black holes. But of course, he, it won't affect yeah. the side targets. No, no. I like, but it's still Ori has BKB, so like he basically needs to get hold now with with these items that he has. And a, a, as we've seen, like there's not that much damage for the hole. Uh, yeah, he's trying to finish this moon shard on Tiny, but he's pretty far away. And until until he starts actually building carry items, I feel like there's there's not that much damage for Entity. Uh, Astra has done a really good job in the fights too. At like whenever the hole is is going off, uh, Siamese Cat in the previous fight was on top of Stormstormer in the back line, just preventing him from jumping in and, and doing his damage. And it, it's like, if Astra survives the hole, like, there's nothing. There's nothing else. There's there's nothing that Entity can do to win the fight. Yeah. Uh, which is exactly why he's building a second black hole in that refresher orb on Toby. He's uh, he's almost got it. I think. Right. A surprise refresher is yeah, what we're going to see. I think that would be good. The nullifier not quite up on Saber. I think that is to cancel the Blood Rage, now that I think about it. Uh, which could be pretty valuable, but... Maybe there's an addition uh, to that. As we're going to see Ori's the Anatos from Stormstormer. Ori at half HP. The Black Hole is there. Dawnbreaker goes right into the Black Hole himself. But again, no damage follow-up at all. Monet just focusing down Stormstormer. Very easy kill for him. And two more dead for Entity. Make it three. Saberlight, the only member up for Entity. And they have lost fight after fight after fight. And now Aster with a seemingly insurmountable lead at this point. Yeah, or he just he just zips in because he knows that as long as they take a fight and it's not like literally an entity's fountain or the tier fours, there's not going to be enough damage. A saber light. Yeah, he's, he's going to get ruptured. Pops that BKB, trying to run through the pain. Used to tell me that on the treadmill all the time. Doesn't really work. As the bash comes out, and he's actually going to die inside cold embrace. Monet getting credit for that one. They're going to get this full set of racks, and the question is, will they continue? Knowing that Black Hole is on cooldown, we're going to focus now onto the bottom set. And XXS leading the way. He has felt very impactful in this game. Been very involved overall. Fishman is trying to defend. And Toby having to buy back means he's very far away from that Refresher Orb. He would need to sell the Vessel yeah. in order to have this anytime soon. Aster is going to back off, so maybe he will have time to farm it. But I, I feel like an item selling play might actually be in order for Entity to win this. Man, it's just been the the story of this game. The black holes have actually been really good from Toby, finding two to three heroes seemingly every time. It's just nobody's dying in them. And now second rush looks like a freebie for Aster, so that's the Aegis and Shard. Who gets the Shard? I believe XXS already has one, along with Monet. So Ori, he's going to get the, the overload or the electric vortex thingy. Or no, the it gives overload, it gives him yeah. it gives him and his allies three overload uh, overloads, and then also he's going to have the 25 talent to bounce that twice uh, with the Agatim scepter that he has almost completed. Yep. This is going to do an insane <laughs> amount of damage, uh, even through something like the cold embrace. Mm -hmm. He's going to be able to 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 kill whoever he jumps in the fights, probably Fishman or Katomi. Oh well, Fishman might not be alive to die in the next fight. Does have buyback, but Aster 
this lead, this is the biggest lead that we've cast, actually, I feel like, in, in this entire tournament thus far. Yeah, I think so. I mean, it's been a slow climb, but it's a 35k gold lead. That's huge. And that's, a, that's without Agon Scepter from Roche. Like, usually we see the lead because of that. Yeah, oh my. Oh my. Percent. What? You're saying there's no chance? Surely with a black it. hole, surely there's a chance. It's probably just rounded up from 0.01. We round up here in NA. That's right. Maybe not from 0.01, though. <laughs> that seems a little that, odd. That really doesn't make any sense, but we're also no. not good at math here in NA, so. That's, that's true. That's the whole point. But like you said, Aghanim Scepter now online for Ori. He doesn't have buyback, but obviously not really worried about the push from Entity, considering they haven't really won a fight in a very long time. Okay. Drop the ward of the sentry on the tower. This is going to be the big fight. Yeah, Monet gets off his rupture onto Stormstormer. Pops the BKB, but the cancellation of the Fiend's Grip again. And just like that, Saberlight and Fishman are dead. Buy back into the game. Midnight Pulse not doing that much. And Stormstormer trying to get away. You can see the Solar Guardian coming as well. Not going to connect fully, but Ori just pushing everybody from Entity back into their fountain as XXS. Doesn't even matter anymore. GG's are called. Are shellacking here in game number one. Okay, well, Aster, man, they just they just worked Entity in these team fights. Uh, they just out out skilled them, outclassed them in these fights. Entity had this big team fight lineup that they were building around. They had worse late game, and they lost a few fights in a row. And Aster gets the gold lead. There's nothing that Entity can do. And I have to say, even though it might not be. Everybody's MVP, Siamese Cat this game, had huge impact on the Earthshaker. I think <laughs> the entire tournament when we see this Earthshaker, it's like pathetic death at death. At pathetic, 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 death pathetic. Over and over. Oh, Until he has a blink? He had oh. one pathetic death. That might be the least amount of pathetic deaths we've seen in Earthshaker this entire tournament. Um, but yeah, Aster looking really strong here. Entity maybe a bit shaky. We saw a couple ults kind of layered on top of each yeah. other early on. And I feel like that kind of set the tone for the game in a lot of ways. It did, yeah. The Enigma and the Winter Wyvern are looking like counterpicks to each other when they're on, on the same team, which does happen, but not usually from a team like Entity. Yeah, for sure. So game one in the book. Series not quite over yet. Another game or two to go. Let's see what the panel have to say and break this down. Thank you so much, guys. Now, Aster take a very, very convincing game number one here. And there's a lot to break down. So I'm going to throw it to you first, guys. Uh, what happened with that entity draft? Oh, I mean, things kind of came together. It felt like they were getting some of the team fights that they typically want. You know, they were hitting the black holes, but they didn't have the damage to finish these heroes time and time again. I think there was the one fight mid where they were the closest. They had the midnight poles, hole onto three. But Chen is just sitting back, and you can see why Chen has been so dominant this tournament. Just heals everyone. Mech, Han have got Holy Locket, even gets a pipe with an Axe later on. Nobody was dying. Is that the solution? The Dawnbreaker plus the Chen? Possibly, yeah. A ton Those of heals. heals and Entity, even though they're known, they known for these heroes that are kind of off lane ish on the safe lane, on the off lane, sometimes even on mid, these heroes don't necessarily always bring a ton of burst damage. If you don't have burst damage against the Chen, you won't be killing anything. Yeah, they lacked a lot of like different damage too, right? You saw them getting black hole and there's like no physical damage coming out. So when they're BKB'd in the black hole, there's just nothing happening. Yep. Yeah, you can see the tiny at the end try to like change his itemization and swerve over to a moonshot. He can never get to these items, but he was basically the only physical damage and he just never quite got to those key items that were going to enable him to actually right click people it's, down. It's, he can't even hit anyone because he has this bloody chihuahua on him like this. <laughs> Bloodseeker is just constantly biting him by his legs, not, not letting go. He has a basher as well. He's hitting you. He, it's just so annoying. You cannot play against it and you can't run away from it because he's zooming around. Uh, like overall, I feel that Team Master, out of all the teams at this event, have figured out Entity the best, at least so far. Yeah, Dawnbreaker as a hero was something that teams just stopped picking. I mean, it felt like, you know, day one, oh, this is the most OP hero, everyone's been picking and playing, and then people quickly learn, oh, maybe not so much, but they brought it out at the perfect time against a team that didn't seem to have an answer for that kind of counter team fight. Yeah, I mean, look Aster. at her stats line on that scoreboard here. It is uh, pretty, pretty nasty for her. 9, 0, and 22. Yeah, that's a pretty good score. Usually wow. that's zero on that same yeah. like on a nine zero at ten, but uh, better kill participation for sure. Yeah, I 
think as well, having a Dawnbreaker with a blink that wants to go on your backline, they're so dominant alongside a Storm Spirit, it made Entity's itemization on supports really hard. Because when you see a team that uh, teams go like evenly matched into the mid game, late game, these four stars and, and glimmers and other like saving items become so important, like a Lotus, any luxury items. You see Kataomi going a blink into a like shadow amulet. He's trying to go for that shadow blade he's done in the past. He feels so threatened and scared. He's barely able to help himself, let alone his team. Bane five support can only afford an ether lens. Yeah, it's it's so them, hard. Both of them are very susceptible to the storm, not only to, to the Dawnbreaker jumping, right? Like Dawnbreaker goes in first, has that shard, can always blink in and use the ult, use the Q, right? But then it's the storm that actually follows up. That's the real threat. That's the one that actually finishes you off. Yeah, storm seems like a real problem, I think, for Entity in this series. Even when they don't have that Batrider versus Storm matchup, which they've lost a couple of times, just the heroes they like to pick and play, Storm is really good against. And Aster, mm -hmm. they're first phasing Storm. That's how confident they are in Ori's ability to win games on this hero. He had a terrible lane. He got solo kill. He was, like, messing up his lane, and the hero is still completely owned. So it looks like uh, we got a little special treat here. Slacks has been wandering around the audience. Let's see what you got for us today, big boy. Welcome to the Texas Hold everybody here at the Major. Let's go in there and go. Everybody down and down the Major. Woo! Texas hold out at the major. Everybody watching all the games. Everybody go at y'all. Oh, oh shit. Everybody go down all the games. You're my man out, man. Yeah, keep going with the other hold down. Hey, my mama, whatever that happened. Hey, my baby, 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 my uh, I want more. I, I want more as I well. Don't this even is perfect. Know Some boys and girls having a good time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess that's a, that's all we can ask for, right? It's, it's <laughs> oh god, he, oh, no. he missed He's his cue. <laughs> this is, uh, yeah, uh, resembling mosh pit a little bit, but. Uh, well, in, they sound uh, happy. Oh, that, 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 that was <laughs> a move. That was a move right there. Right. This is the community coming together the way exactly. that we always wanted. It's just a little do celebration of Dota friendship. I, yeah. I feel that's what happens. Love. That's what happens when you give Slacks a little bit too much freedom. You know, he, he, he gets things going, gets gets everyone riled up.